Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So the 2024 presidential election is just six months away, which means that within the next six months, we're going to know whether or not we're going to have four more years of President Biden, four more years of Trump, or four years for the first time of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Now, each of these three people have very different views on the future of Social Security and what they think should happen. So we are going to cover their views in today's video and what a future could look like with either of these three. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with a good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stocks or $200 in free cash in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link, it's just sign up for a free account and then link your bank account. You do not even have to make a deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd really just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock, is just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so before we go ahead and get into the views of each of these three individuals and what they think the future of Social Security should look like, I will sort of start this out by saying that just because Biden is re-elected or just because Trump is elected again or perhaps because RFK Jr. shocks everyone and ends up winning the presidential election, which is sort of unlikely to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean their views are for sure going to happen because they cannot come in office and uh, you know, create laws. Laws, as you know, have to first be passed through Congress, which means that the bill has to pass through the House with at least a majority. That's typically 218 votes. And then the bill reaches the Senate. In the Senate, it's even more difficult for a bill to pass because in the Senate, they don't need just a simple majority, which would be 51 votes out of 100 senators. Out of 100 senators, at least 60 of them would have to vote in approval for the bill, which means that in most cases, in most years, it would require both Republicans and Democrats to be in agreement with what is in the bill, which as we know, when, when it comes to Social Security and a lot of you know different policies, usually isn't something that typically happens. So we will go with that just because Biden wants something or just because Trump wants something or just because RFK Jr. wants something doesn't necessarily mean that for sure those things are going to happen. But we're going to go ahead, go ahead and dive into their viewpoints anyway. So we're going to start out with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Just because right now, according to polling, he is the lowest right now. And he really hasn't come out and said a lot about Social Security, but we do know a few things about what he was asked in the past and how he answered those questions. So one of the questions that he was asked is, if, uh, should the government raise the retirement age for Social Security? And in response to that, he said, no, this will disadvantage low-income seniors whose uh, life expectancy is lower than wealthy, uh, wealthier seniors. So he is against raising of the full retirement age. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments below about on that. Are you in agreement with him on that policy? And then he was also asked, if, uh, should the U.S. raise taxes on the rich? To that question, he said yes. And why is that important? They don't necessarily mention Social Security there. Well, some of the proposals in regards to uh, you know saving Social Security, making it solid for a longer period of time, is by taxing those earning above $250,000 per year or $400,000 per year and making them pay the payroll tax, the FICA tax, uh, the 6.2 to 12.4% that goes towards Social Security, and then the 1.45-ish uh, uh, percent that goes uh, into Medicare. So that's important there. RFK Jr. is for taxing the rich. Let me know your thoughts and comments below on that. Now, as far as Joe Biden, we know a lot more about Joe Biden because he's been talking a lot about Social Security. He's actually talked a lot about it before coming into office, uh, you know, before, uh, January 2021. Uh, even when he was running against Trump, he had different proposals he had set out there. So far to date, he has not accomplished any of those. Take that for what you will. But according to The Motley Fool, here are four big changes to Social Security that Joe Biden wants to make. Of course, they say here that cities show his plan would fail on multiple fronts. We're not going to get into that. We're just going to go ahead and dive into what his policies 
would be. So the first thing that he wants to do is he wants to reinstate the payroll tax on earned income above $400,000. So in 2023, all earned, all earned income between one penny and $160,200 is subject to the 12.4% payroll tax. Meanwhile, earned income above $160,200 is exempt from the payroll tax. Approximately 94% of working Americans pay into Social Security on every dollar that they earn. Biden's plan calls for the reinstatement of the payroll tax on earned income above $400,000, as well as the creation of a donut hole between the maximum taxable earnings cap and $400,000 where earned income would remain exempt. So this is pretty much goes back to what RFK Jr. was saying just a little bit earlier, where he uh, is in favor of taxing the rich. We could only, uh, you know, sort of come to the conclusion that RFK Jr. would also be on board with this sort of policy. Now, the second change that Biden said that he wants to make, he was saying this once again all the way back in 2019, 2020, is he wants to switch the inflationary measure, the COLA, from the CPIW over to the CPIE. Now, numerous studies out there have shown that over the years, on average, CPIE is just a little bit higher. So if they were to do this, if they were to achieve this goal, then every single year, if you receive Social Security, you would be receiving a slightly higher increase. This increase might be like two or three dollars higher, which over the years would certainly add up. It wouldn't be huge, but something little is cert certainly better uh, than nothing at all. Now, the third change that Biden said that he wants to make is that he wants to increase the special minimum benefit to 125% of the federal poverty level. So in 2023, a lifetime low earning worker with 30 years of coverage can do no better than $1,033.50 uh, benefit check each month. That's below the federal poverty limit of $1,215 per month for a single filer this year. Under Biden's plan, the special minimum benefit would be boosted to 125% of the federal poverty level. Now, if they were to achieve this, that would result in an increase of right around close to $500 per month for those of you receiving these special minimum benefits, so that would obviously be a pretty big increase there. And then they would, of course, index that to inflation from there on out. And then the fourth change that Biden said that he's going to be making, at least if he's reelected, he said this once again whenever he was elected back in 2020, is that he wants to provide a lift to aged beneficiaries via gradual PIA increases. So finally, Biden has called for gradual increases to the primary insurance amount for aged beneficiaries. Under his proposal, the PIA would increase by 1% annually beginning at age 78 and continuing through age 82 for an aggregate increase of 5%. Now, of course, the reason for this proposed increase in PIA is to partially offset some of the higher expenses age beneficiaries contend with, such as rising prescription drug costs and or medical transportation costs. So let me know your thoughts and comments below about Biden's proposals for Social Security. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you believe that he's serious about these proposals? Again, he's had four years to get this done. And even though he's not in Congress, could he have done more to get Congress to pass these bills through onto his desk to at least achieve one of the four that he set out to achieve. Then as far as Trump goes, Trump has also said a lot about Social Security. He hasn't exactly been 100% clear at times. One thing that he has been clear about though is that he is not going to be raising the full retirement age for those close to or at the retirement age right now. And he says, we're not going to be making cuts to Social Security doll. We're not going to be touching it whatsoever. Uh, although he has been, uh, you know, he got a lot of hate for some of the things that he said on CNBC about cuts and stuff like that, even though he did not specifically mention uh, Social Security in uh, making direct cuts. Um, so in interviews during his campaign, Trump has generally rejected the idea of changes to Social Security, which he has said would hurt senior citizens. However, in a Monday interview with CNBC, Trump said that uh, reining and spending on the program could be one way to improve the government's budget. He said, quote, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting, and in terms of also the theft and bad management of entitlements, although Trump did not elaborate on the potential changes he had in mind. And then he also said something about paying for Social Security through America's oil and gas reserves. 
Uh, so according to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget here, they kind of weighed in on that. They said in a town hall hosted by Fox News, former President Donald Trump suggested that America's fiscal problems, and specifically Social Security's looming insolvency, can be solved by tapping into the incredible wealth under our feet in the form of domestic oil and gas. However, dedicating current oil and gas leasing revenues to Social Security would cover less than 4% of its shortfall, and it would be impossible to fix Social Security even if all federal land were open to drilling operations. And then one other thing that Trump said about Social Security, this could perhaps be the biggest impact considering this fund, uh, this amount of money goes into the trust fund, which then pays all beneficiaries. Once again, these things would have to pass through uh, Congress first. Uh, is that on August 8th at his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey, uh, Trump announced that his administration is seeking to delay much of the payroll tax that funds Social Security, one of four unilateral, act one of four unilateral actions he took in lieu uh, of negotiating with Congress on meaningful economic relief legislation. The president also said that if he is reelected, he wants uh, not only to turn the delay into a tax cut, that would result in significant revenue losses for Social Security, but also to eliminate payroll taxes for good. And what are payroll taxes? Well, every time that you get paid by your employer as an employee, if you look at your paycheck, you see the amount that's taken out, you see your federal taxes taken out, you see your state taxes taken out, and then you have something called a FICA tax. Out of the FICA tax, you'll have 6.2% taken out that goes into the Social Security Trust Fund. So if you're earning a $100 paycheck, then 6.2% of that amount gets taken out so you don't get that amount in your paycheck. Instead, that money goes into the trust fund and that money in the trust fund either sits there and grows with the US Treasury and bonds or if there's not enough money in there, then it just immediately gets paid out uh, to people receiving Social Security at that point in time. Uh, so basically, if they eliminated the payroll taxes, then there would not be any more money coming in the trust fund, which means that eventually that would get depleted down and there would not be enough money to pay out benefits in a full. And they mentioned there uh, that it would deplete the trust fund by 2026 or earlier and result in steep benefit cuts, something obviously we would not like to see. Now, of course, Trump cannot do this by himself and himself only. This would be something that would have to pass through Congress first. But let me know your thoughts and comments below on Trump's plan. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you believe that he's serious? Leave your thoughts and comments below. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.